Regular meeting number 23 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Would you please lead us? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening, council is honored to be joined by Imran, Imam um, Horsed Noah, director of the Abakar Islamic Center. Imam, welcome to council. Good afternoon, all, uh, President Hardin, and all honorable counselors and other distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start with a greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I am honored today to appear before you, and I am pleased to invoke the names of <coughs> Almighty God to grant you wisdom to discharge your duty judiciously, honestly, and responsibly with a sense of welfare and the needs of our people, to give you confidence in what's good and fitting. I pray to God to give you all the ability to walk together and work together harmoniously during honest disagreements. May you always have the best interest of our people, the people of Columbus City, in your heart. May God bless this city, the people of this city, and the leaders of this city and the bless the United States of America. Today is the beginning of our holy month, the month of Ramadan. It's a month where God Almighty challenges us to get out of our egocentric vision, serve the Creator and His creations. So I would like to conclude by reciting the first chapter of our Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliki yawm al-Din, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين thank you all thank you and happy ramadan to everyone thank you for it clerk please call the roll brown dorns favor remy tyson president harden any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Sir, please call the roll. Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This week's communications received by the City Clerk's Office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the City Bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? And not at this time. Thank you. Are there resolutions by members of Council, starting with President Pro Tem? Thank you, Council President. Tonight I have three resolutions that I will present together. Um, as I uh, prepare to read them, I would like to invite to the podium representatives from each group. Uh, Sarah Thornburg, government teacher at Columbus Alternative High School. President Terrell Davis and Vice President Stephanie Wiley with Columbus City Schools Bus Drivers, Local 30, 336, along with Lois Carson, State Vice President of OPSI. And finally, Kate King, Director of Health, Family, and Community Services for Columbus City Schools. We are, going, we are considering three resolutions for adoption. 
um, to recognize Teacher Appreciation Week, School Bus Driver Appreciation Day, and National School Nurse Day. And um, the nurses who are with you are welcome to come to the podium too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, by preparing students for successful careers and creating a skilled workforce for tomorrow's economy while also encouraging students to be active and informed citizens capable of guiding our country through civic engagement, it is not an exaggeration to say that our education system is one of the most important building blocks of our society. And what are our schools without the hardworking people who make them hum? the thousands of bus drivers, nurses, teachers, and other dedicated professionals who labor each day to educate and prepare our children for successes. Tonight, that's why I'm happy we have the opportunity to give some much deserved recognition to these individuals for their work. So first, I'd like to highlight today, May 6th, 2019, as School Bus Driver Appreciation Day. As the first point of contact in many students' days and through their professionalism, diligence, and caring, our school bus drivers are a vital part of making sure our kids arrive at school ready to learn. They often face safety hazards on the road, which require a tremendous amount of focus and attention to detail as they provide safe and secure transportation for our students, including students with special needs. City Council encourages Columbus residents to thank the men and women working in, this, in our school transportation departments, and we are proud to sponsor this resolution tonight. Thank you to President Terrell Davis and Vice President Stephanie Wiley uh, and uh, State Vice President Lois Carson with OPSI. I appreciate you being here this evening to receive some much-deserved recognition. So I'd first like to move for adoption of resolution <laughs> Uh, 0158X-2019 for school to recognize and celebrate May 6th as School Bus Driver Appreciation Day. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. I will ask each of you to speak at the end. Um, next, we are celebrating Wednesday, May 8th, 2019 as National School Nurse Day. It is such a basic truism that it seems silly to point out, but if kids are sick, they aren't able to learn, either because they're at home or because they're unable to focus in the classroom. By improving the health of students, nurses help increase academic performance, reduce dropout rates, and promote the overall success of the school. And their impact is felt beyond the classroom as they act as liaison to parents and healthcare providers to encourage wellness and improved health outcomes for the entire community. Thank you, Kate King, and all of the nurses here tonight. We are proud to thank you and to sponsor this resolution. I move for adoption of resolution 0159X-2019 to recognize and celebrate May 8th as National School Nurse Day. Uh, this was for National School Nurse Day, 0159X-2019. Oh, I'm sorry. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Um, and last but not least, uh, thank you to our teachers as we celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week and National Teacher Day tomorrow. Teachers play a pivotal role in the lives of millions of children every day by inspiring a lifelong love of learning and discovery. They make a difference in uh, the well-being and long-term success of those students and therefore the long-term success of our whole community. I think everyone can think back to a teacher or three who had a profound impact on their education and life. I'd like to shout out Mr. Smith, my freshman English teacher, who let me take uh, sentence diagrams home uh, for fun, yes, I did that. I always loved diagramming sentences. Um, and a teacher's impact goes beyond the classroom as they regularly provide supports and resources for families and communities. I wanna thank uh, Ms. Thornburg for being here tonight. You have the distinction of having been Council President Hardin's teacher, government teacher, right? 
uh, at Columbus Alternative High School, and I think it's safe to say you did a pretty good job. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Uh, it is a great opportunity uh, to, to point out the importance of your work and the work of all teachers. So I am proud um, to move for adoption of, is this 0157? Six. Clerk, six, thank you. <laughs> X-2019 uh, to recognize and celebrate May 5th through 11th as Teacher Appreciation Week. Please call the roll. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. Thank you to this wonderful group of people for being here. I'd like to um, first start with our school bus drivers, uh, either Vice President Carson or uh, Mr. Davis. Good evening, President Harding and Councilwoman Brown and all the other council members. On behalf of Columbus Public School employees, bus drivers mainly, we thank you. We have a hard task and I say to the drivers every day, you could make or break that student's day. So it's very important when we pick our students up that we greet them with a smile. We encourage them to have a good positive day because we also know some of the secrets. We know when we pick a student up at the open shelter and we keep that a secret. We know when we pick a student up who hasn't eaten and we can tell that they're so excited to get on the bus because the first thing they say is, I can't wait to get to school to eat. We know when our children have been abused or neglected because we comprehend when they're getting on the bus with no coat on and it's zero degrees outside, no hat and gloves. So we do more than transport our kids to and from school. We pick up on everyday issues with our children that most people don't recognize. But we do because we are the first faces to see them and the last face for the district to see them in the evening. So we thank you for this recognition. We thank you for this honor. And we will continue to serve the children in Columbus City Schools where we have over 900 buses that run daily. What we mainly ask the city members to do, when you see those flashing lights, stop. They're on for a reason. Stop trying to scoot around them. Stop trying to bypass them because that's your baby or someone else's baby trying to get on that bus safely. So be cautious when you see the stop sign out because it's there for a reason. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next, I'd like to invite Kate King to the microphone. Thank you so much, President Hardin. Uh, Council Member Brown for having us here today. I am so honored and pleased to receive this recognition for our school nurses. In, in Columbus City Schools, I have the help of 107 licensed school nurses to provide care for our 50,000 children every day. Providing health services to eliminate or reduce the health barriers to optimal learning is the role of the school nurse. And we do that by using leadership, care coordination, quality improvement, and community and public health to create this wraparound health service for our students. We know it's not just about our students, it's about the, our families and our communities, and we do that very well. Licensed school nurses in Columbus City Schools, and I cannot um, have an opportunity to speak without trying to educate a bit about what school nurses do, it's just kind of how I am. But we, our licensed school nurses are all RNs with a bachelor's degree with post-baccalaureate education who hold an RN license from the state, of, uh, the, the state Board of Nursing as well as the Ohio Department of Education in the specialty practice of school nursing. And what that does is it allows our students to receive the highest level care from nurses, licensed school nurses who understand the practice and specialty of school nursing in providing advanced assessments, developing emergency preparedness plans, coordinating the whole school health program, whether it be for their school or for the whole district, and knowing school law and special education law. In essence, as Councilmember Brown said, we are the bridge between education and health care, and healthy children learn better. Just a few data points for you. Children with allergies have increased by 18%. Six million, or one in 12 children, have asthma. And 16% of African American children have asthma as compared to 7% of 
of white children. It's a huge disparity and school nurses in Columbus City Schools work with our partners to make sure that all of our children receive the asthma care they need. 25% of children in the United States have a chronic health condition. 25%, one in four. So in a classroom, you're talking at least five children. The classroom's bigger, six or seven. And we know that chronic health conditions affect academic outcomes. School nurses work very hard to help students self-manage their chronic conditions. And we know too, through research, that students who learn to regulate their own health have better academic success. The top four barriers to school attendance are chronic disease, such as asthma, sickle cell, diabetes, seizure disorders, lack of health or dental care, caring for siblings and other family members, and unmet basic needs of food, housing, and transportation. School nurses are on the front line of removing all of those barriers that those children come with so they can get an education. A school nurse in a building saves principals almost an hour a day saves teachers 20 minutes a day and clerical staff over 45 minutes a day. And return on investment for nurses is for every dollar a district spends on a school nurse, they receive $2.20 in return in medical cost and lost productivity from teachers and parents. So I just want to say that school nurses are a great investment for all school districts and we so appreciate the support that our administrators in Columbus City Schools, as well as the City Council, gives to our district in order to provide that expert care for our students. Students that are healthy, safe, and ready to learn are students that can have academic success. And thank you so much for recognizing the work that all of these school nurses, most have some red on, uh, do every day for our district. Thank you so much. Great, it's, it's great to see so many here. Um, and next I'd like to invite uh, Sarah Thornburg up. Council President Hardin. <laughs> council Member Brown and the whole city council. I wanna say that I am um, thrilled and humbled and delighted to accept this on behalf of all of my educational co-conspirators at Columbus City Schools. Um, uh, too often, Columbus City, public education, you name it, we don't make the news, we don't get any attention unless it's something bad. So anytime we can celebrate what we do um, and raise up teachers, we're also raising up students. And man, we have some good ones. And so we will keep doing this. Um, nobody goes into this saying, man, it's, it's for the paycheck. We do it because we love the kids, we love the content, and we love what we do. And sometimes you get a council member president out of it. <laughs> sometimes. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you so much. Is there anything my colleagues would like to add? Council member Remy? Sure, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to all of you sitting there or standing there today um, as the uh, spouse of a Columbus City school teacher in her 16th year and uh, three wonderful children at uh, one of the Columbus City schools. I uh, certainly appreciate all that you do and know that commitment and the time and the passion that you put into your jobs every single day. This council is very supportive of all of our public education teachers and we certainly appreciate all that you do for the, the our kids and for our community. So thank you. Council Member Tyson. Um, thank you Chair Brown. As a proud graduate of Columbus City Schools, Eastmore High School when I went to Eastmore <laughs> Academy now, um, and I know that my um, teacher is the first the first Wednesday of May, Eastmore teachers still get together and have conversations about um, the schools and, their, and the individuals who've graduated. But I too just wanna to say thank you. Um, I just appreciate the words that were shared by each one of you who spoke. But most importantly, I just thank you for caring for our children. I appreciate the comments that were given by Vice President Carson in regards to the work that you see our kids and you see the needs that our children have. And you are there to be able to respond to those needs as well as give that information, not only to maybe their parents, but to the schools to help them to, to do better. I appreciate the nurses. I understand the importance of kids being healthy. I chair our health and human services, so I value the work that you do each and every day. I, and, and I really thank you for sharing with our viewing and listening audience the um, 
the reasons that our children are not in school. And as you share the disparities, those disparities are based upon mainly a lot of, well, one is race and the two is the social determinants of health. And I thank you for sharing that information because we have to continue to remind our viewing and listening audience that the social determinants of health do matter to our children. And if we don't resolve those, it's difficult for our kids to move forward. And I thank you for understanding that and being able to help our children. And, and lastly, to the teaching staff, I just thank you for what you do. That I know I sit here because I had great instructors um, in my public school education, and I thank, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. To be able to be, have been in Eastmore where there's a diverse population of individuals to make me a better human being. So I thank you for what you do each and every day. Continue to do this work. This work I know is not hard. The challenges are different from, from a long time ago. There's different challenges, but continue to work hard for our children as you're doing because they absolutely need you for them to be able to move forward in their lives. So thank you and congratulations for choosing this honorable profession. Any other comments? All right, well, um, for my elementary school bus driver, Mr. Tiny, and as the daughter-in-law of a nurse and as the granddaughter of two teachers, uh, this is really fun for me to be able to present with you with these resolutions, so thank you. <laughs> Special privileges. Well. <laughs> That's all you have. Councilmember uh, Doran. Thank you, Council President Hardin. I have uh, one announcement this evening and one resolution. Um, I'd like to announce my uh, May community hours. Uh, the first will be held this Saturday, May 11th, at the Carl Road uh, Library uh, from 1030 to noon. Uh, and again, this Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday on May 15th from 5 to 6.30 at the Franklinton Library. Um, that will be our pizza event this month. So we'll be featuring pizza from Josie's Pizza from Franklinton, uh, which has been around since 1959. Uh, so if they've been around that long, they've got to be doing something right. So feel free to come on out. And I'm going to try and get this pun correct for my staff. Come on out and give me a pizza your mind. <laughs> I, I'm getting fewer laughs uh, than last time. Um, Second, I want to uh, present a resolution this evening um, to, uh, I would like to invite Amy Pompey uh, up to the podium. Uh, Amy's a member of the Ohio, uh, Ohio Nurses Association. Um, as I introduce resolution 0159X-2019 uh, to recognize and celebrate National Nurses Week and the contributions of nurses to the city of Columbus. Uh, Amy's been a staff nurse uh, at the bedside for 23 years. Uh, she moved to Columbus and started at the Ohio University uh, Wexner Medical Center in 1996. Uh, Amy also serves on the Ohio State, uh, Ohio State University Nurses Organization Board of Directors, uh, the union that represents nearly 4,000 RNs at uh, OSU's <laughs> Wexner Medical Center. Uh, in 1993, the American Nurses Association declared May 6th through 12th as the national week to celebrate and to elevate the nursing profession. The ANA is a, is a friend and ally to 4 million registered nurses in the United States uh, throughout all specialties and practice settings, and specifically the Ohio Nurses Association, which represents 11,000 um, union nurses across the state of Ohio. Uh, each year, the celebration ends on May 12th, uh, fittingly so on Florence Nightingale's birthday. Uh, during National Nurses Week, the City of Columbus would like to extend a special thank to our nurses as they continue to provide the highest level of care to their patients. Uh, they deserve special recognition for their vast contributions and positive impact that they make every single day. Um, if there are no questions from my colleagues, I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Adopt it. Now, if Amy would like to say some, say some words. Yeah. First of all, I wanted to thank uh, President Harden, the Honorable Councilman Dorans, and the rest of the Honorable Council members. Um, here with me today are my, is my daughter, Gabrielle, and my son, Gino. So I give up lots of time, family time, to be a nurse, and so yeah. it's 
It's very honorable for my children to see that all my hard work and the sacrifices of holidays and weekends and missing events is really worth something because um, I'm dedicated to the, to the profession and I really advocate for fellow nurses and really want to make a change for future nurses at the bedside. So I'm proud that they get to see this moment. Uh, so thank you for this recognition during National Nurses Week. And while I am appreciative of this recognition, I also want to acknowledge that I am honored to be standing here today in representation of hundreds of thousands of other remarkable registered nurses in Ohio, including the thousands of at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, where I serve as a board member for my local nursing union, the Ohio State University Nurses Organization. I am proud to be a nurse and proud to be a part of the profession that is held in such high regard to the public. Nursing is voted time and time again as the most trusted profession in the United States, and that's because we have the unique opportunity to care for our people in some of the, their most vulnerable times, times where they truly need compassion, a kind heart, a helping hand. We save lives, we heal Ohio. Our patients' lives are our top priority. This trust in us, the trust that we will do whatever it takes to make sure our patients are receiving the kind of care they deserve, is what drives nurses like me and my colleagues to advocate for the safest standards for our patients. Whether it's raising issues to my nursing manager, negotiating patient safety measures into our union contract, advocating for state level, state and level legislation like House Bill 144 to end the dangerous practice of nurse mandatory overtime, our passion for helping our patients is what drove us to choose this amazing profession in the first place. Lastly, this recognition today is more than just a nurse receiving an honor during a celebratory week. It is a symbol that this city council knows the importance of the voice of nurses and our contribution to this community. For that, I am thankful. Thank you again for this recognition. Thank you, Amy, for being here and also lifting up the advocacy that, that you and your colleagues do to, to create a uh, safer workplace uh, for not only you, but also your patients. Uh, my colleagues have anything they'd like to like add? I just want to say thank you. I have, um, not that I've wanted to spend that much significant time at the Ohio State mm -hmm. University Medical Wexner Medical Center, but I have certainly have spent probably the last, I would say, 17 years and a lot of time at the hospital. And I just want to say thank you, not only to you, but all the nurses that are certainly there being supportive, not only of my family, but certainly of other families. Uh, it's not an easy job. And, uh, but I have witnessed nurses um, provide just um, such professional and being very caring of the patients um, within the institution. So from a family that has certainly spent a significant amount of time at that particular hospital, I just wanna say thank you very much to you and your colleagues for caring for my family and for the other families that are also there. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, President Harden. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Favor. Thank you, President Harden. Uh, no resolutions tonight, but just a brief announcement. Um, I made community hours. Uh, the first one will be held this week, uh, Wednesday, May 8th, at the Lincoln Cafe, located at 740 East Long Street. Uh, that will follow up the next week on Friday, May 17th, from 9 a.m. to 1030 a.m. at the Scrambler Marie's, located at 567 East Livingston Avenue. And then following up on Thursday, May 23rd from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. will be at Mission Coffee. Uh, and that is all we have. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Remy. Thank you very much, President Harden. Uh, I would like to invite Chief Quinlan, Commander Meter, and Bill Swank to the podium as I introduce Resolution 152X 2019 to declare the week of May 8th through May 16th, 2019, Light Ohio Blue Week. In honor of our men and women in uniform, downtown Columbus has come together to light Ohio blue from May 8th through May 16th, 2019. Every day, over 1,900 officers of the Columbus Division of Police face the challenge of keeping every Columbus neighborhood safe with bravery and with honor. The members of the Columbus Division of Police perform their duty under the direction of core values, professionalism, respect, integrity, 
discipline, enthusiasm, sense of urgency, and detail, attention to detail. Light Ohio Blue is also an opportunity to remember those law enforcement officers who have given the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. In 2016, Mr. William Swank began this campaign in honor of the first responders in our Columbus community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this Council does hereby declare May 8th through May 16th, 2019, as Light Ohio Blue Week and expresses its gratitude to the women and men of the Division of Columbus, or Columbus Division of Police for their service to the City of Columbus. I would like to point out one thing, that this campaign is, uh, over the last three years, the campaign was originally called Light Central Ohio Blue, and it was focused specifically on Central Ohio. This year, the goal to spread the campaign statewide was successful, and I want to say congratulations to all of those that involved uh, to make that happen. So, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Uh, first, uh, Councilman, thank you for having us here. Thanks for having us in the hollow uh, chambers. Uh, the, as you said, the, pro, the campaign initially started as a grassroots campaign. Uh, initially, just first year was light Columbus blue. And by the second year, it grew to light Central Ohio blue. And a lot of the growth was because of the great citizens. I'm proud to be a citizen of Columbus. Um, and the citizens really and got behind the program and the campaign in order, in order to uh, honor the law enforcement, show support. Um, the campaign continued to grow. A lot of the growth had had to do with the support from the Columbus Division of Police uh, from every level, from the, 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 the dispatcher to the chief. Uh, chief Quinlan, Commander Meter, some of the biggest supporters. Uh, they're off hours driving uh, around trying to find what would work best and getting people involved in the community. This is definitely a, uh, a campaign that's made up of the citizens just as much as law enforcement. Um, a lot of the support we had came from this very chamber. Uh, Councilman uh, Mitch Brown, his staff, Denise uh, Grant, really got behind this. The mayor's office, uh, his deputy chief of staff, uh, Mr. Paul, really helped and em really embraced this campaign. And because of the success that was right here in Columbus, we were approached to expand statewide by the Chiefs Association, the State Sheriff's Association, and the Highway Patrol. They saw the benefits of this where you could work with your community, work with your citizens, common goal um, to show support, uh, and it has grown. It's, it's grown a lot more than we ever en envisioned. This is the fourth year. Sadly, the fourth four years of this campaign, we've lost uh, six Central Ohio law enforcement officers. Uh, there's been 58 Columbus police officers killed in the line of duty uh, just here in the city of Columbus, and there's 799 known deaths in Ohio. Um, so the, the job is, is, is very dangerous. It's inherently dangerous. The men and women who take this on and, the, and their support structure in, in their agencies and at home uh, embrace this. Uh, so this is a nice way for the community to show that they are supported and the ones who have fallen aren't forgotten. Again, I appreciate everything that's done in here to support law enforcement, support this campaign. I'd like to turn it over to Commander Meter and Chief Quinlan. Thank you, uh, Council President Hardin, uh, Councilman Renmi, and Council. Uh, I stand here on behalf of my family. My brother-in-law was shot and killed in the line of duty on December 10th of 1993 uh, while protecting the citizens of Linden. And uh, every time an officer is fallen, it does affect my family, my personal family, and also my law enforcement family. But this campaign uh, is also not only about the fallen, but about the current officers that serve. And so we're very proud of this campaign. And for one week a year, and that uh, begins on uh, May 8th, it is acceptable in Ohio to say, go blue. So uh, that would be one uh, week that we can do that. And uh, certainly with us being here at Council tonight and with the athletic event that begins in just a couple hours, uh, we have blue again. So hopefully this uh, supports the Blue Jackets to a win. Thank you. Thank you, Council President Hardin, members of Council. Um, in 30 years, 33 years of being an active police officer, I've had the misfortune or the unfortunate uh, duty to attend many funerals of police officers. Three times I've been a pallbearer. I never expected when I started this career that I would actually have to encounter 
um, anyone that I actually knew being killed in the line of duty, let alone being a pallbearer three times, was someone that I was very close to. Thank you to Bill Swank and everyone that he has on his side supporting this, this uh, campaign. The business owners downtown and throughout Central Ohio that have uh, joined his campaign um, and changed their buildings, the lights on their buildings blue. Uh, it just again, is a testament to the community and everything that shows how strong our community is. And it's also uniting everyone around Ohio. Everyone saw what Ohio did in the, uh, Central Ohio and Columbus specifically as a lead. And now they're adopting the same idea and going blue. So it's a, it's a huge testament to um, Bill, and I appreciate what he's done, what the community's done. Uh, just yesterday, a 24-year veteran was walking out of a police department in Biloxi, Mississippi, and was attacked, ambushed, and shot and killed. He had a wife and three kids. No sense behind it, no reason, no rhyme, no reason, no explanation. He's still on the loose. This is, the, this is what police officers deal with and what they face and what they confront when they go to work. And to know that there's people on their side and the city council will take the effort to uh, support a campaign such as this, it really speaks volumes to your dedication, your commitment, and to officers' uh, willingness to, uh, to go out there and put their life on the line for a community that supports them so well. So thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Quinlan. Of course, City Hall will be uh, lit blue during the week, um, but how, how, do the, how does the public get involved? How do, uh, what do we need to let the public know that they can do to be involved as well? Uh, it can be as little as putting just a blue light bulb on the outside of your house. Uh, some folks don't have a lighting, put a blue ribbon. Anything that shows support uh, that sh also that message spreads to your, f your friends, your neighbors, your family, and it also shows the officer and their families that's in your neighborhood because the police are your neighbors, that they are supported. So it's just a very low cost way of saying that they're supported, but the, the message has such a far reaching impact to, to everyone who serves. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Awesome. On behalf of uh, Councilmember Mitch Brown and the entire council, we thank you. Um, if there are no questions, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you very much. And now I have a couple of announcements. So first one is calling all of our Columbus City School students. Uh, soon we will be, the Columbus City Council will launch our Cl Cl Cleaner Columbus Initiative. But in order to do this, we need a mascot. So I'm excited to announce that Council is launching a Cleaner Columbus Litter Mascot Camp Contest. We want to heighten awareness and reduce litter throughout our neighborhoods and city streets. And we need Columbus City School students' help. We want to put a face on litter, on this litter reduction campaign. And what, what better way to do that than with a mascot to help spread the message. So the mascot should represent one of the or more of the following three themes, pride in my city, green and clean, and the litter of the law. The school attended by the student with the winning submission will receive a $1,500 first, first place prize awarded in the student's name to be used in Columbus uh, uh, in support of arts education or environmental sustainability. There will be two second, there will be a second and third place prize of $500. All entries must be submitted by May 17th, 2019 in order to uh, qualify. So we will um, also, let's see, the, it needs to be submitted to mascot at columbus.gov, but certainly for more information, please talk to your principal or teachers or go to www.columbus.gov forward slash mascot hyphen contest. 
And so we're very excited about that. Uh, we've, I've already got um, a stack of entries from Mays Elementary. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what we end up with as we move forward. And then finally, I'd like to talk about our, uh, uh, my upcoming community hours. This Thursday, May 9th, we have community hours at the Panera on South High, 684 South High, from 1.30 to 3 p.m. Look forward to seeing everybody out there. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, President Harden. I'm going to ask Tim Sword to um, walk towards the podium. And he's the President and CEO of the Greater Columbus sister cities and we want to just play a portion of a, a video P, P, PSA that will be showcasing our um, upcoming visit next week from the our delegation from Genoa Italy the mayor will be here and a number of individuals but we want to showcase the Paganini violin and just give you a snapshot of um, of what's going to happen next week, as well as uh, Tim will come up and give some other remarks. A priceless masterpiece is coming to Columbus, Ohio. Our city will be one of only three cities in America to have been given the opportunity of hosting a world famous Guinarius violin played by the virtuoso Niccolo Paganini. Thanks to the Greater Columbus Sister Cities Exchange Program with Genoa, Italy, we'll have the honor of showcasing this renowned musical instrument known as Il Canone. At 8 p.m. on the evening of Wednesday, May 15th, Columbus Symphony Concertmaster Joanna Frankel will perform with the 276-year-old Il Canone violin. This magnificent instrument will also be on display at the Columbus Museum of Art from May 11th through May 19th and open for public view. Bill Again, this is a five minute video and there is some great, we don't want to play it for, we didn't want to take up all of council's time, but I will share this. We will hope to have it on the, um, um, on CTV mm -hmm. because it shares a lot of information about um, Paganini and his background and as well as the, um, the maker of the violin. And so, Tim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council Member Tyson and all the Council Members, particularly for your support for the Sister Cities program and this exchange with Genoa, Italy. The Paganini Violin Exchange is phenomenal. It's more than this concert, though this concert is the highlight of the exchange. Uh, it's a rare opportunity for a city like Columbus to have this opportunity to host the, the Paganini Violin, so we're super proud. But it's the partnerships throughout the community, uh, whether it's the Museum of Art, Greater Columbus Arts Council, um, the Columbus Symphony, Experience Columbus, Council of the City itself, but also companies and individuals throughout the community who have stepped up a lot of times out of excitement for this, this exchange that's coming up. Uh, we've raised quite a bit of funds to exceed what the city has invested in this, which is very needed. But people are stepping up and tickets are being sold, so we're super excited. We would ask that you would promote this widely. Some of the things though that connect this exchange to the community that might not be obvious, uh, but are by design, uh, for example, are the opening of this concert will be performed by a youth orchestra. Uh, it's the um, uh, Urban Strings, thank you. Ur Urban Strings Youth Orchestra uh, will be opening up uh, this, this concert, which is super because we're actually connecting young people to something that's been going on since 1955, our sister city exchange with Genoa, Italy. And there are people that remember 1955 and the exchange, the activities that are part of this and have stepped up and invested just in the last week. So to connect those kids to the history of this, to me, is phenomenal. But we're also connecting the city of Genoa itself by welcoming uh, the mayor of Genoa, Marco Bucci, uh, who will be here for a couple days during the, the, the concert but then also an event at the Columbus Museum of Art. Um, we're going to be highlighting, um, obviously, the history of the violin, the exchange, um, but he's also looking for connections with Columbus that are economic development and, and smart cities focused. He's interested in meeting with Ohio State University to see if they can reestablish some exchanges that they've had in the past, and we've, been, we've managed to put these together. Also, the violin, there's a concert, so that's on May 15th, but it's also on display for a week at the Columbus Museum of Art. And we designed it so that for two of the Sundays, it'll be there. 
And this is when there's no fee to get into the museum, so it is open to the public to have this experience. This is a very valuable um, object, and again, it's rare, and it's generated media attention. So we've gotten local media attention. If you looked at the front page of the Columbus Dispatch just today, uh, we're in there, um, so that was super. But we're also getting, being contacted by PBS National News, CBS, NBC, and just this evening, um, a version of the Associated Press in Italy just sent out throughout Italy uh, an article on Columbus in this exchange. So now we're getting international news. And this is the kind of thing that this kind of excitement can, this kind of uh, exchange that's of this caliber can generate this kind of excitement. So I do want to thank Priscilla Tyson for your leadership again and the entire council because without your support, uh, this exchange, the other exchanges with Genoa, as well as the stuff that we're doing in Dresden uh, with students uh, that we've done with the Kra Ghana and the stuff that we want to do in the future, it really depends on the community working together. And uh, if you looked at my LinkedIn page today, I said, you know something's going right when it feels more like a team than a city. And I'm talking about Columbus. It's really, it's amazing to work with all the organizations from nonprofit, government, uh, to corporate, to university to make this happen. So thank you all. And uh, is there any questions? Excellent. Thank you for coming down and certainly sharing. We look forward to next week with our uh, Italian guests will be here. And again, we want to make sure that our young people have an opportunity to go and see the violin at the um, museum, but also their, um, when urban strings are playing, their families will also be coming there to be a part of the concert. So thank you, congratulations, no, thank you. and we look forward to next week. Thank you. I have one more announcement that um, this is a nonprofit that we are that will be funded through the human services this year and they're already promoting the um, their initiative and it is this is need a new start employment and job training it's the academy of urban urban scholars and if you are there are three easy steps complete our incentive driven accelerated boot camp you can obtain a high school diploma or choose a career path career placement wages are starting at 14 dollars an hour and they're focusing on the information technology manufacturing cdl trucking healthcare field construction and again individuals getting a high school diploma and they're really focusing this program on african-american males 18 and you know, 18 plus. If you're interested or know someone who is in need of training and employment, please call 614-857-1811. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Are there any comments by elected officials, city attorney, city auditor's office, city treasurer? Uh, I wanna highlight uh, area commissioners that came out. Milo Grogan is in the house, I see. <laughs> Are there any requests by members of council for the removal or ordinance or resolutions from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now move, uh, have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Is there a second? Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for second reading, or for first reading? Finance Committee, Ordinance 1161-2019, Public Safety Committee, Ordinances 1153 and 1164-2019, Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 1069, 1118, 1125, 1130, 1134, 1136-2019, Technology Committee, Ordinance 1087-2019, Economic Development Committee, Ordinances 1139, 1187, 1210, and 1211-2019, Zoning Committee, Ordinances 1202 and 1203-2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we don't have any uh, speakers on the first reading. Um, so the following ordinance now appear on our agenda as consent action. Will the clerk now read those ordinance numbers into the record? Resolutions of Expression 155X, 150X-2019, Finance Committee, Ordinances 1040, 1042, 1107, 1123-2019, Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinances 973 and 1016-2019, Public Safety Committee, Ordinance 1132-2019, Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 951, 953, 960, 961, 963, 1023, 1077 2019. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinances 944, 997, 1039, 1044, 1056, 1117, 1119, 1133. 
2019 Housing Committee Ordinances 1075, 1120, 1121, 1169 2019 Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee Ordinances 1049 and 1151 2019 Economic Development Resolution 138X, Resolution 144X, Ordinances 1143, 1157, 1158, 1197 Administration Committee Ordinance 1193 2019 Health and Human Services Committee Ordinance 1006 and 1115-2019, appointment from the mayor's office numbered A0073-2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have one speaker on the consent agenda, Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins, welcome back to council. Mr. Wilkins is speaking on Ordinance 1075-2019. Sixteen twelve Arlington Avenue, Mr. Latanya George Wilkins. Um, <clears throat> I'm against uh, CA 2510752019. Um, I'm against it because I don't know how long that this property had been in a land bank, and how and how long that this parcel had set in the land bank, and what will it be used for? Thank you for your time, and I'm also against this property. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, Director, would you please have your uh, team follow up, Ms. Wilkins, to answer the question about how long this property was in the land bank before being put forward for sale? Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions on the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, um, uh, <laughs> seeing none, may I have a motion for approval of these items as, as, as consent? <laughs> please call the roll. Ms. Brown? Dorns? Yes. Favor? Remy? Yes. Tyson? Yes, with the exception of 1115-2019, on which I am abstaining. President Hardin? Yes, consent, uh, consent agenda items are passed. We will now proceed with reading uh, the second uh, of 30-day table emergency legislation. The first uh, committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. That committee is chaired by President Pro Tem, Elizabeth Brown. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Um, tonight in finance, we have Ordinance 1096-2019 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to enter into a universal term contract for the option to purchase sodium chloride with Cargill Incorporated, to authorize the expenditure of $1 from General Budget Reservation BRPO001107, and to waive the provisions of competitive bidding. The Division of Water is the primary user of high-grade sodium chloride used as an ion exchange agent for potable water in the Dublin Road water treatment plant. The term of the proposed option contract is one year with an option to renew for an additional year. One bid was received through the competitive bidding process for this uh, contract. The specifications originally requested a two-year contract, but the vendor specified a one-year contract in their response, which now requires a waiver to accept the change in the contract term. The total estimated annual expenditure for this contract is $360,000. Questions from colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Can I move to Recreation and Parks, Council President? Uh, we have Ordinance 0812-2019 to authorize the City Attorney to file complaints in order to appropriate and accept the remaining fee simple and lesser real estate interests necessary to timely complete the FRA Johnson Road Alum Creek Trail Public Improvement Project. The City must acquire property in the vicinity of Johnstown Road and Parkview Boulevard in order to complete the Alum Creek Trail Public Improvement Project. This process began last year through the passage of Ordinance Numbers 1762 and 3505, 2018, authorizing City Attorney to acquire the real estate and the adoption of Resolution 0249X, 2018, establishing the City's intent to appropriate the real estate. The City Attorney was not able to locate some owners or agree in good faith regarding the amount of just compensation. And this ordinance authorizes and funds the acquisition by the city of the remaining land necessary to complete this public improvement project. Assistant Director Eric Brandon, can you talk a little more about uh, this project, please? Thank you, Councilmember Brown and um, all the members of council. This piece of legislation is just part of our continued effort to um, add uh, 
uh, trails, uh, mileage of trails to our network. And the um, east corridor, northeast corridor, is in uh, dire need of uh, additional facilities. So this will connect um, thousands of residents to the Alum Creek Trail. Thank you. Any questions from colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Dorn's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to read uh, 0972. A little bit out of order because I'm trying to group some food uh, items together. Unfortunately, food legislation items, not actual food <laughs> items. Um, I didn't bring snacks. Bad joke. Um, <laughs> Ordinance 0972-2019 to authorize the director of the Recreation and Parks Department to enter into contract with uh, Complete General Construction Company for the construction of the Olentangy Trail, Antrim Park, and Bethel Road Connector to authorize the appropriation of $2,665,951 in grant funds in the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund and transfer an amount up to $994,059.67 in the Recreation and Parks Bond Fund to authorize the expenditure of $3,660,010.67 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund and to declare an emergency. The Olentangy Trail is the busiest trail in Ohio, with several segments experiencing more than 1,000 users per day. This project will provide safe access to the trail for thousands of residents along the Bethel Road and Olentangy River Road corridor. The project will include construction of a connection to Bethel Road, a shared use path along Bethel Road to Olentangy River Road and Anheuser-Busch Park, the construction of a new trailhead and the expansion of the existing trail from 9 feet to 12 feet to increase capacity. We are proud of our 220 miles of regional trails in Columbus, and this project will improve and increase access to our most used trail in the system. Emergency action is being considered in order to meet the ODOT requirement that the construction contract grant funding be encumbered by May 14th, 2019. Seeing no questions, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Dorn's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. Um, next, we have Ordinance 0967-2019 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Education in the amount of $2,500,000 for the 2019 Summer Food Program to authorize the appropriation of $2,500,000 to the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund 2283 to enter into agreement with Columbus City Schools in the amount of $2,300,000 for the preparation and delivery of meals for the summer food program to authorize the expenditure from the rec of $2,300,000 from the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund 2283 and to declare an emergency. The summer food service program is administered by the U.S. <coughs> Department of Agriculture through the Ohio Department of Education. The program provides nutritionally balanced breakfast, lunch, and snacks to eligible children during the summer months. The program will serve approximately 195,000 breakfast meals, 340,000 lunch meals, and 95,000 snacks. Thousands of children will be served through this program at 240 sites throughout uh, the greater Columbus area. We all know the importance of uh, school free and reduced price school lunches, and yet too many children can't have access to them during the summer. Only about 10% of the students who are eligible for free and reduced price lunches during the school year are able to access that same critical food during the summer months. Yet we know one of the most fundamental ways to keep kids uh, healthy and growing is by ensuring they have proper nutrition. Hunger doesn't end when summer starts and learning doesn't stop either. That's why the summer food program is so important. I want to thank the Recreation and Parks Department for making sure that kids in Columbus have access to nutritious food options during the summer. And thank you to Children's Hunger Alliance and Family Mentor Foundation for partnering with us to supplement this vital work. I will talk more about those partnerships in the next two ordinances. I would like to move for passage of the uh, Ordinance 0967. Please call the roll. Brown Dorn's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Uh, next, as I read Ordinance 1239-2019, I'd like to welcome Judy Mobley and Scott Neely to the podium. 
to authorize the director of the Recreation and Parks Department to enter into a grant agreement with the Children's Hunger Alliance in support of the organization's summer meals program, to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund, and to declare an emergency. As the substantial investment made in the previous ordinance illustrates, the issue of food security for children is especially profound during the summer months when the meals they normally receive at school are not available. Through this ordinance, our Rec and Parks Department is partnering with Children's Hunger Alliance and our schools to pilot four open site summer meal sites during the summer of 2019. I am pleased to welcome uh, Judy and Scott here uh, to talk about what those open sites mean for kids. Thank you. Thank you, Council President Hardin, Council Member Brown, and committee members. Uh, it's really our uh, honor to be here tonight to express our appreciation to all of you in person for supporting this work, uh, these open summer sites in Columbus. Many children will be positively impacted because of your support. Uh, the, so the sites have been selected uh, and they've been confirmed and uh, as when I talk to most of you, they are in Columbus Public Schools. Uh, these are in our most impoverished neighborhoods in the city. Uh, for example, Trivet has 90% poverty and Livingston 86% poverty. So these open sites allow children to come without having a parent or an adult in their life sign them up. They can just come, eat breakfast, eat lunch, get a snack. Um, as you all know, breakfast, uh, lunch is important during these summer months, but getting the kids active and giving them some enrichment activities are important also. We're pleased to be partnering with many other organizations in the Columbus area, uh, OSU Extension, Local Matters, uh, Franklin Park Conservatory, and as mentioned previously, Family Mentor Foundation, which will be providing the children that we're serving with their weekend uh, meals. Uh, we are really excited this year. I had uh, been aware of a program in uh, Youngstown, and we were looking for an opportunity to replicate that. And with the Columbus Rex and Park, we are going to be able to provide some opportunities for teenagers, youth um, programs, and uh, they will work in our sites. So the children that uh, are there will have some mentoring from older youths directly from their neighborhoods. So again, thank you all for your support. Uh, we look forward to having an opportunity to host any of you that would like to come out and actually see a site and see the impact that your uh, support can have on the children that we're gonna be serving this summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions for my okay. colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Uh, and finally tonight we have ordinance 1240-2019. As I read it, I'd like to welcome Carrie Vernon and Emily Chalfant to the podium to authorize Columbus City Council to enter into a grant agreement with the Family Mentor Foundation in support of the organization's Buddy Boxes program, to authorize an appropriation and expenditure within the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund, and to declare an emergency. Similar to the summer months, we also know that weekends can be difficult for children who rely on meals provided at school each day or at their summer program each day. And that's why uh, this partnership between Family Mentor Foundation and their Buddy Box program and CHA and the Rec and Parks Department is so important. The goal of Buddy Boxes is to bridge the gap that food insecure children face on weekends. Buddy Boxes provide nutritious food for children and the Family Mentor Foundation will leverage the partnerships of the other two, or, uh, other two groups on our agenda tonight uh, during summer weekends. In the 2018 to 2019 program year, 32,220 Buddy Boxes were provided to students in 18 schools in three Franklin County school districts. With the funding being allocated, and I'd like to say a lot of that was due to the hardworking volunteers. I'm sure you'll speak to that. Um, with the funding being allocated through this ordinance, Family Mentor Foundation anticipates creating efficiencies to reduce the per unit cost of a buddy box by a third, as well as serving an additional three to five schools and 150 more Columbus school children. So thank you so much for being here, uh, Carrie and Emily, and please share more about this partnership. Absolutely, thank you, President Hardin and Council Member Brown and the rest of City Council members for having us here tonight. I appreciate this opportunity. Um, because of this opportunity, Family Mentor Foundation, as was mentioned, will be able to partner this summer with Children's Hunger Alliance and Rex and Parks to feed kids over the weekend 
um, during the summer. Family Mentor Foundation will be distributing our buddy boxes every Friday at these open feeding sites. And what that will allow is for children to take home two breakfasts, two lunches, and two snacks over the weekend. That will provide them with the adequate, adequate nutrition that they need to continue to thrive during the summer. This opportunity will also help us to increase our efficiency, productivity, and outreach for the 2019-2020 school year. I'm excited to announce that we are currently having conversations that will build partnerships next year with early learning centers in Columbus so that we can now begin to provide our buddy boxes to preschool aged children and give them the adequate nutrition that they need over the weekend. As was mentioned, our buddy box program thrives because of the goodwill and um, loyal volunteers that we have had in this community. We continue to um, receive food donations that help us to continue this important work that we're doing. It has been said that it takes a village to raise a child, and that has certainly been our experience at Family Mentor Foundation. Our buddy boxes, we have learned over time, are so much more than the food that they contain. They're actually messages of hopes to these children. And what we're actually saying to them is we believe in you, and we recognize the challenges that you're going through, and we want you to know that the world really is a good place. So I'd like to end tonight by thanking you guys for being a part of our village and helping us to make a difference in children's lives here locally. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Tyson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Brown and to Emily and Carrie. I really do appreciate your out-of-the-box thinking in terms of ensuring that um, the, the, buddy, the buddy box is body box program it is essential that our children are able to have um, you know breakfast lunch and a snack um, during the weekend and hopefully they're having dinner also but I appreciate that you are providing those meals and that's why I was supportive in putting some dollars into this initiative but also because of the I uh, think about my, our local food action plan which is make sure that individuals that children individuals individuals in this community have access to healthy food affordable food and local food and we want to make sure that our children have access to food if they're getting those meals during the weekend they're going to be better prepared to be able to go to school and learn on monday as you heard earlier this evening so i thank you for uh, this out of the box work and that helping our kids to be able to do their homework during the weekend and then prepare to go to school or in the summer as you're going to do this in the summer be prepared to continue to do their schoolwork during the summer and be prepared to go back to school in the fall so thanks so much for your work thank you so much for your co-sponsorship awesome. uh, council member other comments thank you thank I you very much passage. thank you please call the roll brown dorn's favor remy tyson president hardin fast that's all i have Thank you, Chair Brown. Uh, the next committee to come before council is the Public Safety Committee. Uh, in Chair Brown's absence, second chair is Councilmember Tyson. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Um, the first ordinance is 1009-2019. It's to authorize and direct the Finance and Management Director to enter into a contract with Promega Corporation for the purchase of two Maxwell RSC 48 Premier Systems, which includes installation, qualifications, as well as... I'm sorry, I'm going to read the other one first. So I'm, getting, I don't, I'm going to go back to uh, 19... 919, so I don't get our clerk out of order. So, um, 919, that's 2019, to authorize a city attorney to enter into a contract with a third sector, New England Incorporated, doing business as prosecutor impact to provide specialized training and follow up technical assistance for city attorney, pro for the city attorney prosecution staff for, for, from June of 2019 through June of 2020 to waive competitive bidding provisions of chapter 329 of the Columbus City Codes and to authorize the expenditure of $95,438 from the U.S. Department of Justice's Office of Justice Programs, Bureau of Justice Assistance and Grant Pro Project Pro Funds and to declare an emergency. Um, I'm excited about this program and I'm glad that the City Attorney Zach Klein is in Council Chambers um, this evening. 
because this program will train prosecutors to be better to better understand the root causes motivating nonviolent misdemeanor criminal behavior i.e. poverty mental health and substance use disorders with specific focus on opioid addiction and to develop diversion and prevention strategies that connect individuals with the proper systems for support treatment and or rehabilitation it is a one week of immer immersed highly interactive learning learning experiences followed by weeks of online lessons and virtual discussion forums and 12 months of technical assistance from the PI staff and um, this will ensure that prosecutors not only learn background information but also have tr have training opportunities to apply and practice these skills throughout the training period as part of the PI experience, a peer-to-peer -peer training team will be established within the prosecution division to train new prosecutors and provide ongoing booster sessions for existing staff. The 30 city prosecution staff, 30 persons, will complete PI training in 2019. In addition to training frontline staff, PI will work with unit with the unit to track and analyze data to assess the impact of the PI on social, economic, and justice outcomes um, outcomes over time. And so I don't know if um, um, our city attorney would like to make any additional comments, but I'm really excited about this. Um, city attorney, Zach Klein, I wanna say. <laughs> and if you wanna make some comments, please feel free to do so. Thank you, uh, Chair Tyson, President Harden, uh, and members of council. This is a special and unique opportunity for the city of Columbus. Uh, and I'm particularly grateful for the support of council and the support of the administration uh, to make this happen. Uh, as many of you uh, have heard me talk about um, being the prosecutor in the city of Columbus, of asking a, a very simple question that yields a complex answer of why are individuals committing crime? Uh, and how can we treat that underlying reason of criminality uh, in order to take that person's trajectory and path away from the criminal justice system and give him or her the hope and opportunity uh, that they desperately need, not only for themselves in the recovery, but also for their families and their children. And so in doing so, uh, for far too long in the criminal justice field, I believe that prosecutors have focused really on conviction rates instead of on recidivism rates uh, and tackling the underlying reasons of why folks commit crime. The social determinants of, of uh, poverty and health and economics that you mentioned, uh, Chair Tyson. Uh, in order to do that, it's not just moves away from the policy decisions we make in our office, which uh, we are aggressively uh, doing so. And I think that if you read the most recent article in the Columbus Dispatch about our medicated assisted treatment in the jail. That was a program that we helped spearhead, spearhead and coordinated with many folks down at the courthouse uh, to get folks medicated assisted treatment on their way out through probation to help them wane off their uh, addiction to opioids. Um, it's not just policies, but it's really a shift in the way of thinking. Uh, the way of thinking as a prosecutor and, and inviting prosecutor impact uh, into the conversation to train our prosecutors are very talented lawyers. We're very uh, fortunate in the city of Columbus to be able to have a wonderful group of prosecutors that are dedicated to the mission of change. But it takes, uh, it takes that train, that extra step of training, and that's where prosecutor impact comes in. Uh, I would recommend to, uh, to the council uh, and to anyone who's interested to um, look up Prosecutor Impact, to check out uh, the gentleman who founded it. His name is Adam Foss, F-O-S-S. -S. Uh, Adam uh, did a TED Talk. He's a former prosecutor from the New England area and did a TED Talk that went viral uh, for the obvious reasons about reforming the criminal justice system. And he started as a result of that Prosecutor Impact. Uh, so we're actually going to be, I believe, the second or third city in the United States to have this training with, I think, a half dozen or a dozen more on the hook uh, following Columbus. So we really are at the cutting edge uh, of training our prosecutors for the maximum outcome uh, for the folks, the defendants that come through our, our, uh, our uh, courthouse, but also for their families. And, and as I stated, I'll kind of end where I began. We can't just simply focus on conviction rates. We have to look at recidivism rates uh, because only then uh, can we truly make our community safer. Uh, because if you expect, if you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, which is the way we've handled the criminal justice system for decades, uh, then we're not going to be able to really make headway to make our community safer, save taxpayer money, keep families together, give children and hope and the opportunity that they deserve. Uh, but that's the mindset that we're taking in the city of Columbus, uh, and we're going to be a, a leader on the cutting edge with this council's uh, support, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you.
Thank you, City Attorney um, Zach Klein, and it is absolutely the right the right way to look at this issue. And just appreciate um, your work and your um, your effort in moving this forward. And there are no questions or comments. I move for passage. Brown Dorn's favor. Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. Now, ordinance number 1009-2019 to authorize and direct the finance and management director to enter into a contract with Promega Corporation for the purchase of two Maxwell RSC 48 Premier Systems, which includes installation qualification as well as the Premier warranties and the purchase of one Maxwell FSC DNA IQ casework kit for the Division of Police Crime Lab to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code, Chapter 3 29 to authorize the expenditure of $109,165.35 from the general government grant fund and to declare um, an emergency. Um, the DNA, this, the DNA extraction instruments will be used by the DNA unit to perform the DNA extractions evidentiary samples. The division of the Columbus the, the Division of the Police Crime Lab was awarded the Forensic DNA Laboratory Efficiency Improvement and Compa Capacity Enhancement um, Program Grant Award from the National Institute of Justice for the specific purposes of purchasing two Promega Maxwell RSC 48 Premier Systems and one Maxwell FSC DNA IQ casework. And I don't know if the Deputy Director um, the Deputy Director Stewart wants to make any comments about this legislation because I know we are waiving um, competitive bidding, the competitive bidding provisions of this legislation. Uh, members of Council, Council President, President Pro Tem, um, I am not particularly uh, up to speed on this other than what you've already read. I read it also, and it's just as a result of something that's been offered to Columbus because they have the opportunity to expand their abilities right now. And this will help them greatly. Well, thank you. And um, again, I know we're waving it because this grant specifically stated we had to use this equipment. And so if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Second. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. That's all I have in safety this evening. Thank you, Chair Tyson. Next committee to come before council is Public Utilities. Uh, committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Dorns. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. We have uh, two pieces of legislation in public utilities this evening. Uh, first is Ordinance Number 0925-2019 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to modify an existing professional services agreement with HR Gray Associates for the wastewater treatment facilities uh, professional construction management project mod number two to authorize the transfer within and the expenditure of up to uh, $8,235,949.39 from the Sanitary Sewer General Obligation Fund and to amend the 2018 capital improvement budget. Um, this contract provides construction administration and management services for construction contracts, including the DPU facilities roof replacement project, the DPU facilities HVAC re re replacement program, uh, compost, odor control improvements, among other small capital projects. Uh, this will be a five-year contract commencing, commencing in, um, this year with a closeout of the final project added to this contract modification in 2021. Uh, if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Second piece of legislation is ordinance number 0984-2019 to authorize a director of public utilities to enter into a service contract with Lime Cork LTD for the Hapcremine water storage sludge removal lagoon number two. Uh, project to authorize a transfer and to expend, a expenditure up to $2,362,400 within the general, um, within the water general obligation voted bonds fund to provide for the payment of prevailing wage services to, to the Department of Public Service, design and construction division for the Division of Water, and to amend the 2018 capital improvement budget. Um, the removal of sludge from Lagoon 2 will provide additional storage for emergency situations due to the loss of pumping capabilities uh, and for maintenance shut shutdown for pumping equipment. Uh, the sludge from the Lagoon will be, will be taken um, to the beneficial reuse outlets, providing another use for what would have otherwise been disposed of in the McKinley Avenue quarry. Uh, doing this will also preserve the life of the McKinney, McKinley Avenue quarry. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. 
Brown Dorans favor Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. Uh, President Hardin, with your permission, may I move to technology? Thank you. Uh, we have two pieces of legislation this evening. The first is ordinance number 0808-2019 to authorize the assignment of all past, future, and business businesses done by the City of Columbus with Veritai Services, Inc. Um, to Veritai uh, Corporation uh, to authorize the Director of Department of Technology to enter into contracts with Veritai Corp. Uh, for annual maintenance-related services associated with the uninterrupted uninterrupt power supply systems. Um, to authorize a direct, the, de the director of the Department of Technology to enter into a contract with Veritai Corporation for heating, cooling, and ventilation for HVAC systems and various equipment maintenance. Uh, to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the City of Columbus Code. To authorize the reestablishment of the remaining uh, unspent slash existing balances on previously authorized purchases so that the outstanding invoices can be paid. Uh, to authorize the expenditure of up to $157,258.04, uh, including con contingency funds from the Department of Technology, including Services Division, Information Services Operating Fund, and to declare emergency. Uh, this ordinance actually performs uh, five actions, including a name change, reallocates unspent funds, authorizes maintenance and support, purchases additional equipment, and provides contingency funding to all related um, to the Department of Technology's uninterrupted power supply. An uninterrupted power supply, or UPS, is also known as a battery backup and provides backup power when your regular power source fails or voltage drops to an unacceptable level. Although maintenance services for UPS services are, un are available from other suppliers, Veritai Corporation is the only factorized, authorized service provider for UPS equipment used by the city's data centers, which is the reason the department requested to waive competitive bidding. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move, I move for passage. Brown Dorans favor Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Next is ordinance number 0995-2019 to amend the 2018 capital improvements budgets to appropriate and transfer $630,000 in general permanent improvement funds to the Department of Technology to authorize a, the Department of Finance and Management to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriation of universal term contracts slash purchase agreements with Brown Enterprise Solutions LLC, Soft Choice LLC, and with the state term contract with Simplex Corporation for the purchase of new and replacement computers and related peripherals to authorize the expenditure of up to $630,000 from the General Permanent Improvement Fund and $605,000 from the Department of Technology Information Service, Information Services Division Information Services Fund. Uh, the passage of this ordinance will authorize the purchasing of Dell, HP, and Microsoft and Fujitsu computers and, and um, accessories off these agreements and contracts to the Department of Technology uh, and other city agencies. These computers are being replaced uh, due to being outdated or obsolete and are vital to the daily operations of the City of Columbus. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown Dorans favor Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. President Hardin, may I move to rules and reference? Please. Thank you. Um, I have one piece of legislation, rules and reference. That's ordinance number 1079-2019 to amend chapter 598 of the Columbus City Code in order to clarify and amend regulations for short-term rentals, um, operations, and hosting platforms. Uh, this legislation repeals and replaces various sections of the current Columbus uh, City Code for Chapter 598 to harmonize multiple previous iterations and to recognize, reorganize with clarification certain sections involving the licensing process, uh, regulation of hosts and hosting platform requirements, and criminal penalties for short-term rentals. Uh, due to concerns and interests of the community members at the initial passage, uh, continuous clarification and amendments are deemed both reasonable and necessary at this time. Uh, the city's goal with this legislation is to balance the well, well-being and interests of the city residents and visitors while allowing short-term rentals to operate and become a piece of the economic, uh, economic and tourism fabric of the city of Columbus. Research and a nationwide scan of policies in other cities uh, inform this legislation as numerous meetings with impacted stakeholders such as residents and community members, the hosting platforms, short-term rental hosts, hotel motel representatives, and the tourism industry, and realtors. Uh, given the rapid growth and dynamic nature of short-term rentals, a thorough review and assessment of the current regulations for short-term rentals will occur uh, two years from January 1st, 2019 of, impl of implement imp implementation. Um, for more information on short-term rental regulations and how someone may be able to obtain a permit, I encourage folks to visit columbus.gov slash str. Um, if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. 
Chair, uh, we have representatives from Milo Grogan who wanted to make a comment sure. ab uh, about uh, Airbnbs, and mm -hmm. thought it might be appropriate to do it now. Absolutely. Would you folks like to come to the podium? Thank you. Thank you, President Harding, Council, Councilman, for letting us speak today. Um, I will be very brief. Um, I just wanted to bring it to Council's attention that um, neighbors have been voicing major concerns about learning that there are three Airbnbs operating within a neighborhood. Um, there is the um, Columbus Adventure Pad at 787 East 3rd, Milo Grogan Inn at 612 and 614 East 2nd, and the Legacy House at 453 Reynolds Avenue. Um, we weren't aware that these were popping up in the neighborhood. No one ever came to the commission or anything like that. And so um, we've had different issues. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a round table meeting with the neighbors this month. Um, it's, um, I'll make sure that we have it posted once we have our, our date and time um, solidified, but we want to bring the residents to the table to really be able to hear their concerns, look at um, legislation and see how we can find some middle ground with this. Um, because a major concern of theirs was our civic and our commission um, and having actually people, long-term residents to participate in those different activities. Um, we learned over this weekend that there are new residents that moved into the area and they did so because of our unity and because of our sense of community in Milo Grogan. So I just wanted to um, kind of put that on the table and let you guys know about that. And then speaking of the community, I did bring you all our May newsletters um, with all of our activities that we have planned. Thank you. And real quick, I just want to thank uh, Shayla for coming out this weekend for our um, community cleanup. We had uh, 149 volunteers that showed up. Uh, we picked up uh, 179 bags, uh, three mattresses, one couch, one needle, and um, one TV, and we found 25 tires. So thank you for coming and being part of that. It was great. Yeah, on the tour. Okay, so on Wednesday the 8th, um, I am having a tour of Milo Grogan. Um, last year, we just kind of walked around the area, and this year, um, Tristone is going to loan us one of their buses so that um, we can actually take about 30 people around the area, and um, we can highlight different things. So um, if anyone would like to join us, I know it's last minute, but we still have seats available now that we have a bigger bus. So <laughs> thank you. And lunch will be provided. So the, the plan is to meet about 9.45, tour from like 10 to 12, and then we will provide lunch afterwards at 12. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, any questions? Oh, thank you. Thank you, commissioners. I, I appreciate that feedback. Uh, one thing I wanted to clarify with the legislation and speak to some of those neighborhood concerns is uh, this legislation ensures that we have a robust registration system for Airbnbs and other uh, hosting platforms in the city of Columbus. And for us, one of the first things we want to do is know where these, uh, these uh, short-term rentals are and having a registration uh, and permitting system in place helps to identify those, uh, those rentals that are happening in your community. So uh, as again, as this conversation continues to move forward, uh, this legislation is really focused on making sure that you know who's operating in your, in your neighborhood, the city knows who's operating in your, in your neighborhood. So again, if there are concerns, whether those concerns are noise, trash, traffic, parking, all those kinds of things, we know where there are. Uh, without having a robust uh, registration system in place, it'd be difficult for the city to, to be able to address those kind of concerns. So this is the first step in making sure that um, you know neighborhoods have that. And I think one of the things we'll do is make sure that uh, we get this information to all the different area commissions around the city, so that folks have a uh, a better understanding of what the what the registration process is and how that can impact knowing what what's going on in your community. So thank you for being here tonight and addressing those concerns. So thank you. With that, I'd like to move for passage. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. 
Thank you, Chair. The next committee to come before Council is a Public Service Committee. That committee is chaired by, uh, by Councilmember Favor. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, we have Ordinance Number 1011-2019 to authorize the City Attorney to file complaints in order to immediately appropriate and accept, it, accept the remaining fee simple and lesser real property interests necessary to timely complete Poindexter Village Roadways Phase 2 Public Improvement Project. The City's Department of Public Service is performing the Poindexter Village Roadways Phase 2 Public Improvement Project. The City must acquire certain fee simple title and lesser real property interests located in the vicinity of Mount Vernon Avenue and Ohio Avenue in order for DPS to timely complete the public project. The city attorney served notice to all of the owners of the real estate of the public project purpose and necessity and the city attorney was unable to either locate some of the real estate's owners or agree with some of the real estate's owner in good faith regarding the amount of the just comp compensation. Excuse me. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Brown Doran's favor, Rene Tyson, President Hardin. And last, we have ordinance number 1057-2019 to amend the 2018 capital improvement budget to authorize the transfer of funds within the streets and highways bond fund to authorize the director of public service to enter into contract with Strausser Construction Incorporated for the resurfacing preventative surface treatments project to authorize the expenditure of up to $1,605,050.70 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund for the resurfacing preventative surface treatments project and to declare an emergency. This project is in alignment with the city's commitment to improving the infrastructure of every neighborhood. This contract consists of the crack ceiling of 140 city streets and the slurry ceiling of 117 streets. The plan also calls for areas of full death payment repair and other work as may be necessary to complete. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Chair. The final committee to come before Council is the Economic Development Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Remy. That, that Remy, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Council President Hardin. I'd like to invite up uh, Kenny McDonald, the President and Chief Economic Officer of Columbus 2020, Nate Green, and Dave Luketic from uh, Root Insurance. Tonight I have a resolution 1211-2019 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a dual rate jobs growth incentive agreement with Root Inc. for a term of up to six consecutive years in consideration of the company's proposed capital investment of $3 million and creation of 863 net new full-time permanent positions with an estimated annual payroll of approximately $60,840,596. The Columbus Department of Development is proposing to enter into a dual rates job growth incentive agreement with Root Inc. in an amount equal to 35% of the City of Columbus income tax withheld on the Columbus payroll of new employees and 40% of the City of Columbus income tax on the Columbus payroll of new employees who are also City of Columbus residents at the end of each year for a term of up to six consecutive years. The primary line of business for Root is, uh, Inc. is headquartered in Columbus, Ohio, is providing property and casualty insurance, in particular personal passenger auto insurance, Root relies on telematics and a customer's smartphone to deliver rates for good drivers based on their current driving data. Root was formed by a veteran of the insurance industry that saw a need to provide good drivers an insurance product that rewards them with low insurance premiums based on their driving ability. The company's auto insurance products are sold, administered, and monitored through a smartphone app. Root does not employ agents to sell or administer its, its uh, products. Um, Roots is requesting a dual rate jobs growth incentive from the city of Columbus to assist with this expansion project. This legislation is presented as 30 day legislation. Mr. Lukatic and Mr. Green and Mr. McDonald, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, President Hardin, uh, Council Member Remy, and other members of council. Thanks for having us here with you uh, this evening. I'm Nate Green with the Montrose Group. We represent uh, Root, and uh, Dave Lukatic is with Root. We thank you very much. Uh, for your partnership uh, in helping Root grow. Root is uh, an incredible success story, as you talked about, uh, Council Member Renemy. Uh, when you uh, helped us in May of 2018, May of 2018, that was one year ago, uh, Root had 79 employees. Today they have over 500 employees. Uh, 
I can say that that is due in no small part to the public-private partnership that you all at the City of Columbus City Council, that your, uh, the, the mayor and his uh, development staff uh, has done for Root. This, is, uh, this really is an incredible success story. The incentive uh, that you're talking about tonight is going to continue that success. Uh, Root is uh, going to have its second location here in the city of Columbus as a, as, a result of this, uh, as a result of this expansion. They'll add an extra 400 jobs on top of the 463 they already committed to. Uh, they, have already, they have already blown through that 463 uh, that they committed to before. They're, uh, as I said, they're over 500 employees as part of that now. Uh, they are going to, their, their current location is over on the Columbus Commons. Uh, their second location will be out at Easton uh, on Stelzer Road, uh, which they're ready to go and ready to, ready to jump into. So uh, we're very happy, very excited um, that, you, uh, that you're consider that with your partnership and that you're considering this incentive tonight. So Dave, I don't know if you have a couple thoughts as well. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank City Council for their support um, in Columbus 2020 and Jobs Ohio. Um, we continue to grow as a company and hoping to stick around in Columbus for now and in the future. Thank you. We're kind of hoping that too. Um, President Harden, members of council, um, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your prudent leadership of the economy as well. Um, uh, thank you for your consideration of this project. It's, uh, it's critical uh, to provide assistance to companies like this not only because they're the, they're the kinds of high growth companies that we long um, uh, you know, sought and are seeking after every day, but that other cities are also uh, courting uh, every day when they pick up the newspaper and see this or the darling of the insurance uh, and insure tech industry is headquartered here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, your consideration of these performance-based incentives is critical. Uh, and it sends not only, uh, it only not only pr provides assistance to the company, but it provides a signal to the insure tech and fin in fintech industry and other technology companies that are living and considering our area uh, for future operations. So uh, I want to thank you for your consideration and know that we have enthusiastic support from uh, Columbus 2020 and our team uh, for the company, the industry, uh, and the project. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Um, real quick, just a question. This was not a slam dunk that it was coming to the city of Columbus. Am I correct, this expansion? Yeah, absolutely, it was not a slam dunk. Uh, the city of Columbus was in direct competition with one of your neighbors in Dublin. Uh, you, I can say that the city did uh, really stepped up to the plate. The Department of Development staff, the creativity they came up with with this incentive was certainly a uh, reason that, uh, that Root is choosing to come to Columbus and grow in Columbus, not in Dublin. Uh, the company also looked outside of the state. We also looked in Indianapolis uh, to grow the company, but uh, we're deciding to, to grow it here. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming down tonight to speak to us about this. We do have one speaker on the agent, the uh, um, on this resolution this evening, or ordinance this evening, and that's Joe Motil. Mr. Motil, welcome back to council. If you could state your name and uh, any rep any organization you represent, you have three minutes to speak. President Harden, members of City Council, Joe Motil. I live at 167 West Cook Road in Columbus. I just don't get it. You have all these prominent, well-respected financial business sources like Forbes, Wall Street Journal, Business Wire, and others who claim that this company is the real deal and that the sky's the limit. And locally, people like Mr. McDonald have made the claim that Root is a super company with super leadership and that their recent growth has just been awesome. They're receiving startup funding from some of the biggest venture capital groups in the country, and their valuation is now estimated at $1 billion. The company has expanded to 20 states and plans on selling its product nationwide by the end of the year. And in case you haven't heard, people in Columbus and around the country are tired of corporate handouts, whether they are in the form of tax abatements, tax incentives, or flat out just avoiding paying any taxes at all. Everyone needs to pay their fair share, and the preferential treatment for the rich has got to stop. And your desire to continue the unwarranted practice of developer and corporate handouts comes at a time when our city auditor has stated that our 2019 tax revenue is coming in flat and possibly falling behind. So here you are tonight talking about giving up over a half a million dollars in city income tax revenue in a one-year period in a three- 0.5 million over a six-year period. 
And, for the, and this is for a company that sounds to me like they are doing just fine and will continue to be profitable and gain market share in the insurance industry without a handout at the taxpayer's expense. This city, its people, and neighborhoods need the financial resources in order to give them a fighting chance to gain economic and social stability and a future for their children. You've heard the cries for more funding from the many nonprofits such as Life Care Alliance, Mary Haven, Stonewall Columbus, and others. Bread has been down here on a regular basis advocating for more funding to help provide affordable housing for low-income folks. Residents want more parkland, sidewalks, public health care centers, daycare, and on and on and on. It's gotten so bad that you've begun to qu the questionable diversion of money from community development block, block grant funds for street resurfacing and trying to convince people that this is a legitimate use of these funds. And you are doing this because we do not have enough income tax revenue in our coffers to pay for this year's street resurfacing. But yet, you're here tonight reducing income tax revenues at the expense of the city's overall needs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Motil. Director, could you speak to the fact that, about the growth of the income tax that this is actually creating as we um, impl implement this, this ordinance? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair, President Harden, members of Council. Actually, if you would allow me a moment to um, first um, say uh, the first part of Mr. Motil's comments were exactly why um, we need to offer incentives to companies like Root. They are successful. They are growing. They are one of the darlings of the industry, and any city in the country would um, do whatever they could to attract a company like Root to their community. We are in a competitive environment. I would love nothing more than for there to be legislation at the federal level that says communities can only offer formula-based tax programs to their companies, but that's not the world we live in. So companies like Root will be courted, um, enticed, incented to go wherever, and we have to be competitive. Um, so, you know, fundamentally there's that, that's the facts of the situation. Um, to uh, your question about um, the income tax benefits, I'll have to look at the notes, which means then putting on my glasses. Um, uh, we are looking at um, an annual uh, net um, value to the city of about $912,000 uh, per year when this fully comes, uh, when this Incentive, or when the company fully finishes hiring up, that's after the discount uh, to root that's incorporated into the incentive. And then also, if you'll allow me one other indulgence, um, part of the complexity of the legislation is that uh, council was um, supportive of passing, supportive in past legislation, uh, I think about a year and a half ago, to support the downtown location, rather than having two separate incentives where the company had to track, you know, exactly where someone's working. If are they working? downtown this week and out at east in the next week we f we thought that the best and most productive and actually most transparent way to do the incentive would be to combine the two so that's some of the complexity of the legislation councilmember tyson thank you chair remy i am excited about this legislation and i know that um cumulative the income tax revenue with incentive over the course of the six years will be about $7.4 million that would be income, as well as about $60 million would be the cumulative payroll for, from this company. And again, um, even though, I mean, it's 863 jobs, which is wonderful, and 260 of those jobs are customer service jobs that pay $18.27. And we know that for an individual in this community needs to make at least seven, I mean, we have $15, but it's at least $17 an hour to be able to begin to provide for their families. And so 1825 is certainly a, uh, an hourly wage that is important to this community. And then um, again, even in, in the engineering, 390 
390 jobs for um, at $37 an hour. And so from basically it's from 1827 to the 30, almost 36, 37 dollars an hour jobs are what our community needs to be able to, uh, again, provide our our residents with the hourly wages to take care of their families and also provide them with an opportunity for starting an hourly rate of 1827. Certainly, as individuals continue to, to um, uh, work for this company, continue to grow with this company, that they'll be able to make more money and provide for their family. So from that standpoint, it is certainly a benefit to our community uh, and individuals will personally be able to feel the um, impact of those type of salaries. So kudos to you and your team for bringing this organization to our community. Council Member Dorans. Just wanted to echo those comments from Councilmember Tyson. In addition to these being living wage careers that are being provided here, these also come with access to retirement uh, benefits and health care benefits. And if a family doesn't have access to those two things in addition to a living wage, it's tough to make it. Um, so this is exactly the kind of thing that uh, we want to make sure that we're holding up as an example of what this development strategy looks like. So just wanted to, to hold up that aspect of this, this discussion as well. So thank you, Kim. Thank you, Councilmember. Any additional questions or comments from my colleagues? First, I'd like to move to re request a waive second reading. Second. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Waived. And then I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. And that's all I have tonight in economic development. Good job, Mr. Chairman. Uh, seeing no further business to come before council, may I get a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown Dorn's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Meeting number 23 is adjourned. We will, uh, re, uh, we will reconvene for zoning momentarily. Regular meeting number 24 will now come to order. Can I get a motion? Clerk, would you please call the roll? Brown Dorn's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee. All members serve on the committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents and three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side, and we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to either speak for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. Thank you. I have ordinance number 10. 1071-2019 to amend ordinance number 1552-2004 passed July 26 of 2004 and ordinance 1302-2019 passed June the 17th of 1991 um, for property located at 5150 and 5160 North Hamilton Road by repealing section 3 of ordinance number 1252-2004 and replacing it with a new section three, thereby modifying the CPD tax for sub area 14A as it, is, as it pertains to parking and landscaping setbacks. And to modify section 15 of ordinance number 1302-2091 to revise legal descriptions for these not 2000, 1991, to revise um, legal descriptions um, these specific properties. Ordinance amendment is the proposed use is a project modification for the arterial street widening, the city department's recommendation is approval, and the Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval 14 to 1. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Best. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1109-2019 to amend ordinance number 1247-2014. 2004, passed November 29th of 2004, and Ordinance 2215, 1998, passed September the 14th of 1998, for property located at 4845 North Hamilton Road, by repealing Section 1 of Ordinance Number 1247-2014. 
2004, Section 1 of Ordinance Number 2215-1998, replacing it with a new Section 3, thereby modifying the LC4 and CPD tax for parts of sub-areas 1 and 2 as it pertains to parking and landscaping setbacks and to modify Sections 1 and 3 of Ordinance 366 Dash 92 to revise legal descriptions of these properties. Of these properties, the or, it's an ordinance amendment. The proposed use is a project modification for arterial street widening. The city department's recommendation is approval, and the Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval, 14 to 1. Uh, if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1116 2019 to, to amend ordinance number 1228 2014, passed July the 19th of two, 2014, 2004, I'm sorry, passed July the 19th of 2004 for property located at 4950 North Hamilton Road by repealing Section 3 and replacing it with a new Section 3, thereby modifying the CPD tax as it pertains to parking and landscaping sections. This is an ordinance amendment. The proposed use is a project modification for arterial street widening. The C Department's recommendation is approval. The Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval 14 to 1. I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1126 2019 to amend ordinance number 1822. Dash 97 passed July the 27th of 1997 for property located at 4940 North Hamilton Road by repealing Section 3 and replacing it with a new Section 3, thereby modifying the CPD tax as it pertains to parking and landscaping setbacks. This is an ordinance amendment. The proposed use is a project modification for arterial street widening, the C Department's recommendations approval, and the Northland Community Council's recommendations approval 14 to 1. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1127 2019 to rezone 4996 Riggins Road, being 4.75 acres located at on the north side of Riggins Road, 146 feet west of Amber Lane from CPD Commercial Planned Development District to LM Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant is Cardinal Self Storage LLC. The proposed use is a self storage facility. The C Department's recommendation is approval, and the Hayden Run Civic Association's recommendation is approval. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance, 1128-2019, to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3363.24, building lines in the M Manufacturing District of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 4996 Riggins Road to permit a self-storage facility with reduced development standards in the LM Limited Manufacturing District. The proposed use is a Cardinal Self Storage LLC. The proposed use is self storage facility. The C Department's recommendations approval and Hayden Run Civic Association's recommendations approval. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1135-2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3353.03C2 permitted uses, 3311.28A less objectionable uses, 3312.09IL, 3312.25 maneuvering, and 3353.05B C2 district district development limitations of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 5015 Dwecker Road to permit storage as a primary use in a mixed-use development in the C2 Commercial District. The applicant is Arlington Resources LTD. The proposed use is a storage use with a max with a mixed-use development. The C Department's recommendation is approval, and the Northwest Civic Association's recommendation is approval, 10 to 0. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. 
Barone Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. And the final ordinance and zoning is 1162-2019 to grant a variance for the provisions of sections 3332.035R3, residential district, 3332.05A4, area district lot with requirements, 3332.13R3, area district requirements, 3332. 18D, basis of computing area, 3332.19 fronting, 3332.25 maximum side yards required, 3332.26B1, minimum side yard permitted, 3332.27 rear yard, and 3332.38A, E, and F, private garage of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 158 Linwood Avenue to permit residential private garages with reduced development standards to be a principal to be a principal use in the R3 residential district. The applicant is Maine Miller Company LLC. The proposed use is residential private garages. The State Department's recommendation is approval, and the Near East Area Commission's recommendation is approval 12 to 0. If there are no questions or comments. I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, <coughs> President Hardin. And that co concludes the ordinances and variance, the ordinances and um, the zoning committee. Thank you, Chair Tyson. Seeing no further business in the zoning uh, committee, uh, may I get a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hardin. Meeting is adjourned.